Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video I'm going to be doing a Q&A and I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me all of your skin related questions. So I've got a bunch here and I'm probably going to make this a little bit of a series because you guys asked a lot of different questions. Um, but this first one's going to really focus on acne, skin texture and retinol because there was just a ton of questions all relating to that. Um, so if you're interested in any of those topics and you want to hear the questions that people ask that maybe you have as well um, and my answers, then just keep watching. All right, let's get into it. So the first question is, does your diet have a really big impact on your skin or are the products you use more important? So there have been a lot of links found between diet and things like acne um, and also inflammatory conditions such as psoriasis and eczema. Often this happens when you have a food sensitivity and then your body reacts in some way and you can see it on the skin. It's kind of like when you are allergic to strawberries and you eat a strawberry, you get a rash. So there is definitely links between diet and skin. Um, specifically, there have been links found with a high glycemic index. So if you're eating a lot of carbs and sugar, that has been associated um, or correlated to um, higher chances of acne. And then they have done some studies between dairy and acne, but the science has been kind of contradicting each other. Different studies say different things, so there's not a solid answer on that one right now. But there definitely have been found to be links between diet and your skin. So if you are having troubles with cystic acne or um, things like rosacea or eczema, you might want to look at um, your diet and see if there's anything in there that you might be sensitive to. A lot of naturopaths will do food sensitivity tests and you'd be surprised at all the amounts of foods that you actually are a little bit sensitive to but aren't exactly aware because it's not an, it's not a full-blown allergy, it's just a sensitivity. So if you do have some issues and you think it might be related to your diet, um, definitely something to look into. But it's a combination of both, you know, your diet and then the products that you use. But if there is something in your diet that's affecting your skin, there's nothing, there's no product that you could use that's going to fix that because it's internal. So you kind of got to just do some trial and error, some discovery, working with a naturopath and see if potentially there are some things that you are sensitive to that you're not sure that you were. Okay, um, what causes little white bumps on the face slash chin area? How do you get rid of them? Thank you. So. These little white bumps are, they're not acne, it's actually just a buildup of your skin cells when the kind of equipment in your skin does not function properly to exfoliate and shed those cells. So the best thing that you can do is do a chemical exfoliant, so either a beta hydroxy acid such as salicylic acid or an alpha hydroxy acid um, should work as well, either lactic or glycolic acid, and you could use these one to three times a week on the affected area and hopefully just restart that exfoliation process again for your skin. I will mention that with salicylic acid, it is going to exfoliate your skin, but sometimes your skin can be reliant on this ingredient to exfoliate. So if you've never used it before, I would probably try either lactic acid or glycolic acid first because they're a little bit less skin addictive a little bit more um, gentle. They work in a little bit of a different way as well. So definitely try out a chemical exfoliant if you're experiencing little white bumps on your skin. Okay, someone is asking my opinion on retinol. Um, so retinoids in general, I'll just talk about this right now. So I personally don't use them. I have extremely sensitive skin, so both tretinoin and retinol would probably not work for me. So there is a retinoid that is better for sensitive skin. It's a little bit newer on the market, but it has been proven to be way less irritating and also help with the bioavailability of the other retinoid products. And it's called hydroxypenicolone retinoate. I know The Ordinary has uh, launched a version of this as well, um, but this one is better for sensitive skin. Retinol and tretinoin are extremely, extremely irritating for people that have sensitive skin such as myself, so I kind of steer clear of them. Also my, my opinion with retinoids as a whole is if you don't need them yet, maybe don't use them yet, they are probably the most effective anti-aging ingredient on the market, but if you have younger skin and you're not struggling with acne, you might want to save that active ingredient for later in your life because um, just the more you've, you use active ingredients, sometimes they can become less effective over time. Your skin just gets used to that constant exposure to the active. 
So in my opinion, I'm probably going to save the use of retinoids as a whole for later on in my life when I'm really looking for strong anti-aging effects. Right now, all the other anti-aging ingredients and all the other antioxidants are doing the job for me and I don't feel like I need that next level of anti-aging ingredients. But of course, if you are uh, struggling with acne or rosacea, retinoid products can actually be really great for kind of combating the inflammation, the redness, and also just control sebum um, production in your skin. So definitely something to look into if that's you know a concern that you have. But me personally, I'm just staying clear of them right now. I also think the technology with retinoids is going to get better and better over time, so they will hopefully be less sensitizing and less irritating to people like me that have extremely, extremely sensitive skin. Okay, someone asked, any ideas how to stop topical acne medication from burning your skin and making it red? Okay, so if this is happening to you, I highly suggest you go back to your dermatologist and let them know that this is a reaction you're having. Generally, people with acne prone skin have extremely sensitive skin and it should your product should not be burning your face and causing redness. That means that there's something wrong there, they're too irritating, they're too strong, you need a different solution. So definitely go back to your dermatologist and let them know about the reaction that you're having and see if there's some other more gentle options out there for you. How can big pores be reduced? I'd love a video on that. So you can't actually change your pore size, unfortunately, but you can really reduce the appearance of enlarged pores. And generally enlarged pores um, are pretty clogged. So the best thing that you can do is exfoliate your skin using either a beta hydroxy acid such as salicylic acid or an alpha hydroxy acid such as lactic acid or glycolic acid uh, three times a week, one to three times a week, depending on how much you feel like you need it. And you really, really cannot change the size of your pores. So if you do have large pores, you might want to try a pore filling primer that really just smooths over the surface. And um, generally these are silicone based, so it just has a very like light scattering effect and you can't actually see the texture on your skin but there really is no way to physically change the size of your pores. Um, you can just change the appearance of how your pores you know, are. And the best way to do that is exfoliate regularly and then yeah, just use a pore filling primer uh, throughout the day. Okay, someone asked, what is the best treatment for rosacea? Um, so there's a lot of different ingredients that work for rosacea and all rosacea is a little bit different. So you might have to do some trial and error and see what works for you. Um, probably the more, I'll go more gentle to the more extreme ingredients. So the more gentle options for you would be a good aloe polysaccharide product. So either you're just using the aloe plant um, straight off the plant or you have a non-heat treated aloe gel. Um, next I would say resveratrol is a great one. It is really good at targeting acne, rosacea, and just overall redness of the skin. So it does reduce redness um, over time. Another great option for those that are experiencing rosacea is azelaic acid, which is a fatty acid. And you can find it in over-the-counter products 10% um, and less, but they do offer prescription of azelaic acid at higher concentrations. So it might be something to ask your dermatologist about if you are looking to use azelaic acid for rosacea purposes. And then the other two ingredients that I'll mention that have been proven to be good for um, rosacea are retinol and then also niacinamide. So I know the Ordinary carries, I think, all of those actives in little individual um, options. So if you are experiencing rosacea, you might want to try and introduce one of those, I think I mentioned five, five ingredients or a combination of them and see which one works for you as all rosacea is a little bit different. Okay, someone is asking me what's up with texture and what ingredients to use for it. So textured skin often needs to be exfoliated more often. Um, that's why we can have basically just a buildup of dead skin cells that your skin is not turning over properly and it creates texture on the skin. So I definitely recommend, again, similar to the little white bumps, um, using either a BHA or an AHA or a combination of the two to target your texture. And you're gonna wanna exfoliate using one of those chemical exfoliants about one to three times per week. Okay, someone is asking me the best way to fade dark marks left by acne. Um, so I definitely recommend using a compound called Arbutin for this. Arbutin is a um, chemical compound that is derived from a tree and it has been proven to help with dark spots and pigmentation. So it is a great ingredient to use for that. I also recommend pairing it with a good antioxidant. 
So whether that's resveratrol, ferulic acid, vitamin E, or vitamin C. And then in addition, you're going to want to be exfoliating your face regularly just to promote healthy cell turnover as those other ingredients are doing their magic as well. Okay, someone is asking me for oily, acne-prone skin, what ingredients should we look for? So I definitely recommend you are, you know, this is, there's a common theme here. So you should be exfoliating your face. Um, often people with oily skin prefer to exfoliate with a beta-hydroxy acid. Um, but you can also exfoliate with an alpha hydroxy acid if that works for you. I also recommend using hydrating ingredients. So that could be an aloe polysaccharide extract, that could be a hyaluronic acid extract, or it could be, I think that there's these, um, like the algae polysaccharides, which are similar to hyaluronic acid. Those are all very hydrating ingredients. And often oily skin is dehydrated, even though it is oily, but it's oily because it's overproducing oils to kind of replenish that moisture barrier um, and not allow any more evaporation of water out of the cells. I also really recommend you have a moisturizer that has ceramides in it. So ceramides make up the natural moisture barrier of the skin and just over time they get depleted with sun, water exposure, and they really are important for preventing water evaporation out of your skin cells. And when this does happen, your skin can kind of overreact and produce a lot of oil, which is why you might have oily skin. So I definitely recommend looking for a moisturizer that does contain ceramides in it. Ceramides of kind of any type. I prefer the plant-derived ceramides because I don't like using animal products, but there is a lot of great ceramide products out on the market. So that might be something else to try and introduce into your routine to just replenish that moisture barrier from the inside out and then get that sebum production back under control. Uh, niacinamide is also another ingredient that really helps with sebum control and production, um, so it might be another one to introduce into your routine. Okay, I kind of love this question because this used to just be my life. Uh, what tips do you have to help someone stop picking and popping pimples? So I struggled with this for a long time, especially when I was in school, because I would always be, you know, sitting on my hand, touching my face, just picking at stuff throughout the day when I was studying, you know, just hyper-focused on the on the computer I would always touch my face and it just made things so much worse so I actually find that when I wear a small layer of makeup I do not touch my face at all so that is one tip I've learned or trick tip or trick I've learned over the years is that when I have a bare face on I actually tend to touch my face all the time out in public you know sitting at my computer I just touch my face all the time versus when I'm wearing makeup I don't want to mess up my makeup so I never touch my face and that actually helped me clear out my acne because I wasn't touching my face as much. Um, another trick is when you want to pop a pimple, just take a big glob of like cream or gel or whatever and just pop it on. Like just put a huge glob on it so that you can't even really see the pimple and then you'll lose the desire to. And if you go to touch it you'll be like oh gosh that's product and then you're not gonna pop it. So that's something that I found at home. All of my pimples I would just put a huge glob of moisturizer on them and just leave it like that and if I ever went to go touch it I'd get reminded that I shouldn't be touching it because I'd be touching a huge glob of product um, same thing for when I'm going to bed I'll wear uh, like a huge glob of my moisturizer on top of my acne so that I'm just not subconsciously picking it throughout the night as well so those are kind of my two trip tricks one for daytime is just wear a super light layer of makeup that's going to make you not want to touch your face. And then number two, just have a huge glob of product on the pimple while you're at home. When you have that urge to, you know, pick or pop, just replace it by putting a huge glob of either gel or a moisturizer on top and then just leave it be. Okay, somebody asked me how, do, how does retinol work? And I do want to get into this, but I think I could do an entire video on how all the retinoids work. So I'm going to leave that one for a video exclusively on retinoids. But really good question, really interesting. I'd love to dive into the biochemistry behind how these work and why they're anti-aging and how they affect sebum control and acne and all those, all those things. So that video will definitely be coming. Okay, and then someone did ask, what retinoid do you suggest for dry and sensitive skin? This again would be that hydroxypenicolone uh, retinoate product. That's definitely the one that I recommend for people with sensitive skin because it has been proven to be a lot less irritating um, than the retino retinol or tretinoin products.
Okay, this one's interesting. Someone asked, how do you feel about proactive? So, in my opinion, you know, acne can affect your life so much and affect your self-confidence so much that if you find a system that works for you and it makes your skin clear and that makes you feel better, then there's nothing wrong with that. What I don't like about proactive is that people often do find that if they stop using it at all, even for one day, their acne comes back and it comes back worse. And this does often happen when you're using the combination of benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid at high concentrations in multiple of your skincare products. So yes, is it effective? I definitely think so. Has it helped a lot of people clear their acne? Absolutely. But once people like try and get off of it, they often have a lot of struggles and will have to move to another anti-acne type of skincare system anyways. So I think that it's good if it has worked for you and if you want to continue using it, that's great. But for a lot of people, it worked and then they, you know, their skin was beautiful and clear and made them feel confident and they stopped using it and then it all came back. So I'm just not a fan of products that do that. I think that skincare products should really be building up your skin's own machinery to exfoliate and you know protect itself and prevent evaporation of water out of the cells. So if you have to rely on your skincare to have nice, healthy, glowing skin, it's a bit of an issue. Um, I think that you should actually be able to step away from any skincare routine for two to three days and have no issues come up. Um, well, that's just my opinion. So I don't have strong opinions about proactive, but I just don't like the fact that a lot of people struggle getting off of it because it just causes an overreaction on the skin and their acne can often come back and come back worse. So that's kind of my two cents on proactive. Okay, the last question for today's Q&A is what slash how many products do I need for a basic skincare routine and how often should I exfoliate? So in my opinion, there is yeah, I would say four products that you're going to need in a basic skincare routine. So you're going to want to have a nice gentle cleanser. Um, this can be, you know, an oil and water cleanser or it can just be a gel cleanser. Next, you're going to want to have a moisturizer that um, encompasses both hydrating and moisturizing ingredients. So hydrating ingredients can include like an aloe polysaccharide extract or a hyaluronic acid. And then um, moisturizing ingredients can include things like plant oils and ceramides. So if you have a moisturizer that encompasses both, that's perfect. And then absolute must is your SPF. You have to wear SPF every single day. Um, and then lastly, yeah, I think an exfoliation step is really important for a lot of people. Uh, I would say most people. So as far as exfoliation, you can use either beta hydroxy acids or alpha hydroxy acids and I definitely recommend doing this one to three times per week um, and just see, you know, if you feel like you need a little bit more, you could go up to five. If you feel like you are fine with less, exfoliating once, exfoliating once a week is totally fine. So I think the most basic skincare routine should encompass a cleanser, a good moisturizer that has both hydrating and moisturizing ingredients, um, an SPF, and then a good chemical exfoliant. Okay, that's all the questions I'm going to answer for today, but thank you to everyone who um, left me questions on Instagram. I think it's really fun to have that interaction and really get to see all the questions that you guys are wondering. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my channel and be part of this awesome community of science babes. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.